Uh, my name is Mario Di Cato. I come from Luxembourg. And uh, my uh, task was to see if there was something in relation to ESAs in oncology, ESA use, uh, new in this year. Uh, I mentioned November because we are a few weeks before ASH. So there will certainly be some data there. Just to set the stage, here you can see the pooled analysis uh, from Heinz Ludwig, which was published end of last year, and which uh, showed no difference in overall survival, uh, including long-term follow-up in this large number of patients treated with, uh, so this is individual database. And if you look at the progression-free survival, it's the same thing. There's essentially no difference. So this comes with the issue of uh, Henke and all the other uh, problems over the past few years. So I thought we should start with this type of slide. Uh, what is new in iron therapy? Well, we were left with uh, the conclusions of several studies on iron, which uh, are very favorable. And um, this is one of the studies, the Pedrazzoli study, where you can see that uh, um, the hematopoietic response is in favor of those patients who were on iron. But, and that's why I mentioned uh, ASH, uh, this was presented last year at ASH. This is a Mayo Clinic study where the different uh, patients given placebo, oral, or IV iron did not show any, any difference in hemoglobin response or in transfusion requirements. So this is, was presented and in an abstract form only available as of now, and the update will be at ASH a few, years, a few weeks from now. In addition in this study, if you look at the uh, side effects, eight in IV iron, six patients died in the oral arm, three in a placebo arm. This was not statistically very significant, but the side effects were significant comparing the two groups. And there was no uh, less consumption of erythropoietin. What happened during this year was there were a lot of publications on uh, inflammation and basic biology. And I'm just going to uh, show you this old slide from uh, 1996 by Norusian, uh, to which I added uh, the new data over the, over the past few years of hepcidin and the mechanisms of iron availability and the discussion about IV and oral iron, which goes into all of this. So this is a repeat of the stage where we are at. There is some data on anemia of chronic disease. TNF is a major player in this, which has a direct effect on genes that express, that are involved in hemoglobin expression. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details. GATA1 is also one of the major players in the story, and maybe Joachim will tell us more about this. A uh, few interesting articles on uh, uh, non-erythroid effects of erythropoietin. Well, you have seen that over the past years, that there have been a whole series of uh, papers on this uh, issue. Here is a uh, recent paper, in fact, it was published a couple of weeks ago, on uh, the effect of erythropoietin on macrophages. And this is the editorial that comes with it. Very interesting paper showing that uh, you have uh, pro-inflammatory as well as, as anti-inflammatory activity of erythropoietin. This erythropoietin enhances functions of macrophages. A similar effect has been shown on dendritic cells and also on the expression and increase of survival and function of dendritic cells by erythropoietin. There's always the issue if uh, dendritic cells and macrophages, they come from the same ancestor cells, at least in a mouse, and the question is, can this be transposed to humans? Macrophages may produce functional erythropoietin, and uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you can enhance or attenuate inflammatory re response in some models with erythropoietin, delaying the TNF alpha story and decreasing also the other cytokines. So macrophages can be a target for erythropoietin. So this is basic science biology. This comes with from Arkosoy from the editorial I just mentioned. And the reason I'm showing this, this is not new, it's just a new form. Um, I think Joachim and myself, we were involved in a discussion about this type of slide some time ago about a paper. But what is interesting is that uh, uh, there are some publications about the effect of uh, erythropoietin on foam cells, decreasing the amount of storage of uh, lipids in foam cells and having an effect on atherosclerosis. This is non in, not inhuman. Uh, another interesting uh, paper, which I'm not really sure about, that I would like to discuss later with Joachim, 
uh, is uh, in science, and there are several papers in science on, uh, on, ERIT, on ESAS. There are also a couple of papers in cell. Uh, this is an interesting paper looking at what that the processing of the erythropoietin receptor, which is inside the cell, compared to its, uh, uh, the, the amount of receptors on the membrane. And uh, the paper shows the influence of the intracellular quantity of eporeceptor on the functional membrane receptor, which you would expect by upregulations of production. But it also shows the influence of the amount of erythropoietin on the receptor having an effect not on what we usually look at about erythropoietin and uh, hemoglobin production, but on the receptor itself. So what does the ligand do when you have large amounts of ligands compared to less amounts of ligands to the number of receptor on the membrane? So this is an interesting paper. And there, there are many like that. Now, regarding the clinical data, uh, there is not that much new uh, over the, in, during this year. On the clinical data, this was a kind of editorial. It's not a real editorial, but it was kind of editorial uh, in the New England Journal in uh, January. And uh, despite the fact that we saw from uh, uh, one of the previous speakers an excerpt uh, about transfusion, there is practically nothing on the transfusion story in this re-evaluation. So I didn't really see what the purpose of this paper was. Um, but what is very interesting is a large study. This is a prospective randomized study done by a German group in Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, using erythropoietin alpha in patients uh, who were given uh, BCOP, which is a rather aggressive chemotherapy uh, uh, schedule. And uh, if you look at different, I don't know if you can see that from here, but if you look, for instance, the death rate, there's no significant difference. The cause of death, there was no significant difference. And if you look at uh, other, other, the amount of transfusions, there was no significant difference. And here's the summary, if you want. This here is the overall survival. There is essentially no difference. So in fact, overall, there was no difference between the placebo group compared to uh, the ESA group in this large study, so with hematological malignancy. It was a large study, 1,300 and more patients, of which around 900 have been evaluated completely. And uh, uh, overall, you can say uh, survival, progression of disease, number of transfusions, practically no difference, no deleterious effect at least. Thank you.